good morning everybody to the Yoruba people in the house I say Ekaro to the house of people in the house I say Assalamu Alaikum there are very few of them here but the people I love most my Igbo people in the house Igbo Kenu Igbo Kenu Igbo Kenu so I know that my country is well represented here the Yorubas are here the Hausas are here the Igbos are here so we are well represented over here are we not? fantastic fantastic the speakers before me like Folake and uh, Mogaji they spoke so well I think you need to give them a round of applause for that I think our MC of the day George Will was not introduced so the MC for the day George Will he also gave us some good jokes a round of applause for George Will among the learnings from the previous speakers what I have on my notes here is we should all try and work together we should try and collaborate instead of competing we should collaborate that's what I got one of the lessons and the common lesson between Biodu and Folake was to take an action Biodu said you should take one step forward and Professor Dr. Folake said it's the time you should take up action you should, should take the next step you should take that action make that happen that's why I said you should make a to-do list is it not so? so we had a common learning lesson from Biodu's talk and from uh, Dr. Professor Folake's talk and she also said that we all need to improve ourselves we need to get better I heard somewhere and I quote on that same lines of getting better the person said you should become a better version of yourself every time instead of comparing yourself with somebody else compare yourself of today with yourself of yesterday are you getting better? good if you're not getting better, it means you need to take action. So if your version today is 2.1, change it to 3.0, change it to 4.0. Be a better version of yourself. That's in simple words putting what Fulake just mentioned. Get better. Before she left the stage, there was a question somebody asked about, which was a HR related question. Somebody asked a question from this side. Your question was, how do we get good team member? Am I right? Okay. I have a mentor, Sir Richard Branson. He has two philosophies on getting, two, getting good team members. Do you want to hear it? Do you want to know what he says? How many people know Sir Richard Branson? A lot of people know Sir Richard Branson. That's my mentor. That's my boss. If you see him, greet him for me. He said two things on the staff, which I will quote him now. He said, hire for attitude, train for skill. I'll repeat, hire for attitude, train for skill. It means when you're looking at somebody, his attitude is more important than his skill because most of the skills, most of the things they're doing on the job, they learn on the job. So the first criteria to look for is attitude. So finding a person with a good work attitude will make your life easier, will make a good team member. That's number one lesson from Sir Richard Branson. The second thing he said is that train your staff so well. Train your staff so well that they can leave you. Train your staff so well so that they can leave you. Some people are looking at me eyeball to eyeball. What is he saying? I'm not finished now. So he continues. He said, train them so well that they can leave you, but treat them so well that they don't want to leave you. Treat them so well that they don't want to leave you. So if you adopt these two philosophies, if you adopt these two learning lessons of Richard, Sir Richard Branson, I think that should be able to answer the question you raised earlier. Thank you. Okay. Do we have the slides? What is business? If you ask me, business is 
whereby entrepreneurs can make a customer put hand in his pocket bring out the money and exchange it for goods and services on a regular consistent basis business for me the definition for business for me is that whereby we entrepreneurs provide goods and services to the users that they put out money hand in their pocket bring out the money in exchange for that goods and services on a regular consistent basis meaning thereby if you are exchanging goods and services for money just once off that's a transaction if you are doing that just once off is a transaction it's not a business business has to be something which is regular business has to be something which is sustainable so that is business in my definition in that regard what is agri business agri business means business related to agriculture simple agri business means business related to agriculture now i come across a lot of entrepreneurs young ones the upcoming ones they have this notion in their mind when they hear agri business that if you are an agri business you have to be a farmer is it true no right yes that's why when you have a conference of agri conference that's why you see people from different aspects of different industries within the agri sector is it not so so in a agri sector in a agri value chain there will be people providing different services in the same sector let's let's look at them you could be the person providing the land you could be the person providing the inputs you could be the person cultivating the crops you could be the person who is into the consulting you could be the person who will do sales and marketing of the agriculture products so on and so forth let's look at look them one by one if you decide that you are the one among the value chain you want to play in the value chain of land in that case you could be a real estate agent you could be an agent who provides lands to the farmers etc or you could be a lawyer who specializes in is in agri business that okay anybody wanted to start agri business i'm a lawyer who specializes on agri so i know all about agri business and anything related to agri land maybe it's fish ponds or whatever you need to know i am expert lawyer in agri business if it's possible then you could also be a surveyor because if you need a particular form type of soil for cultivation like pyotu uh, was saying that oh now he can test the soil and he knows xyz about that soil which i don't know so what you could be that surveyor who can find out about that land okay this land is suitable for maize this land is suitable for this type of crop you could be specialized on that so under land also you could be different value chain you can play within the land also we can move forward under the inputs you could be the one providing selling seeds you could be the one selling the fertilizer you could be the one selling the pesticide germicide etc etc you could be the one who is supplying equipments to the the uh, who needs the equipment the farmers who needs the equipment you are the one providing them equipments it's also possible that you specialize in human capital somebody said i think george will said he he wants to start fish farming but when george will starts fish farming he will need team he will need labor to work in that farm what if i'm the person who specializes in giving them manpower for fish farming who are trained people will it not make his life easier will he not pay for my services but can i not at that point of time can i not say i'm in agri i'm in agri because i'm supplying i'm providing labor or even i'm providing training to that human resources i'm providing training to his team members who are going to do the work on the field as such so i could be in that field also but the human capital and training uh, goes hand in hand if you're talking about crops now somebody could be specializing in cutting of crops i don't know i'm not from agri sector sir i'm just passing on thoughts that don't have that fixed mindset professor for like i said don't have a fixed mindset that agri means farming agri means only fish farming agri means only this one no don't have fixed mindset you could be specializing in only cutting it's possible you could be specializing only in storing you might have some warehouse somewhere the person has uh, has cut his crops he doesn't have space to keep the crops you provide him space 
for storing the goods you could be specializing on that some goods may require cold storage it may require cold chain management so you could be that person who specializes in cold chain management of the crops of the yield what from the farm so you could be specializing on that you could be the one specializing on processing you don't need to be a farmer to be in agri you could be the one after they have farm they brought out the crops you can be the one processing it you could be the one packaging them you could be in logistics transport so from the farmland to the market you want to bring goods to the market you could have vehicles you could hire vehicles you could have a system whereby you are the transport person so if they want to transport anything from niger kogi abakalaiki anywhere they are cultivating you want to bring it to the market you want to bring it to lagos you want to bring it to ibadan you should have a person who you can rely upon you can be that transport person in that agri value chain doing the transport business talking of consulting consulting goes a long way you could be a project consultant so george will if you're looking to do fish farming any project consultants on fish farming here who can help george will to do project on fish farming anybody can consult george will can be his consultant on fish farming anybody around nobody okay okay so so these are the people who will consult on a project from start to finish they'll tell you exactly what you need how much space you need how much capital you need how much manpower you need and how much time the fishes will grow how to sell how to package they'll give you the whole idea of the whole project they are the projects consultants then you have sales and marketing consultant because maybe as a farmer i know how to grow but i don't know how to sell so why not specialize in the sales and marketing of that stuff so that the farmer does what he knows best the transporter knows what he knows best at least you try to be the best in the sales and marketing then you can take the service sales of a good transporter who specializes in transport but your own specialization could be sales and marketing production you could be specializing in the production some of us present here could be specializing in finance and funding people are looking for funding so if you know how to get funding you can be their consultant towards how to get finance you can be their consultant how to get funding for their projects you could be their consultant you could be the consulting on cooperatives that how to form cooperatives uh, mogaji said we should all work together so maybe you have a consultant who will bring a group of people together let's do these things together so that we have economies of scale so that we can together join our skills together to form a cooperative so it could be a consulting you can be a consultant and cooperative any people from it in the house there some few people from the it so you are providing it services in the agri sector so you belong to the agri sector but we are providing it services to help all the people in the value chain you could have different options you could have an app to do something you could have some information to be passed on to the farmers you could have some latest information to be given to the marketers you could have some information to be given to the transporters and on it basis on the it platform you can do various things you can be creative you can be innovative on that so not necessary that you should belong only as a farmer if you are into agri chain hr we discussed hr that you could specialize on recruiting of staff you could be specializing on training of staff on consult on consulting you could also be consulting on insuring your staffs uh, insuring your crops how many people know that you can insure your crops you can insure your fishes you can insure your livestock how many people know that you can insure them so there's some awareness that you can insure your agri products you can you can insure your crops your livestock even if the fish farming you are doing you can actually insure them so that in case something go forward something happens you have something to fall back upon fantastic under sales and marketing you could be the wholesaler you could be the semi wholesaler you could be the distributor you could be the retailer you could be the broker just a middleman buying from this person selling it to somebody else you could be the exporter you could be buying from the people and then exporting it all over the world as such so under sales or marketing also is not fixed we, we already heard that don't have a fixed mindset have a mindset of grow always try to grow try to look what are the opportunities available try to look what are the chances available around you don't have a fixed mindset this is what interests me 
how many of us would like to have a business which can run without you being in the business without you being present at the place only few of them okay most of us are hard working people okay more and more people are raising their hands but is it possible to have business, business run businesses without you being there is it possible it's possible fantastic i came across this book build to sell there was a old book which was named as build to last so when i saw this one build to sell i said no something is wrong somewhere why will i build something and i want to sell setting up a business is like growing a pigeon no be so bros i fit fit speak pigeon abi because as I speak pigeon now, they look my face, everything happened. Why I change levels? So, so, just think for a minute, think for a minute. So, when I get business, and then somebody, they come here, they talk, say, make you sell your business. Build to sell. What do you think? Are they Chris? I know buy me Chris now. I build something. I grow picky. Now I won't sell them. But the idea is that you should build a business such a way that it is sellable. That does not necessarily mean you should sell. You may want to sell. No problem. And move to another business. For example, Beardu. Beardu has 500 acres. He may decide to sell that business and maybe say, okay, I have done too much of maize. I have done too much of expertise in maize. I need to, I need to grow. I need to look for another crop which will challenge me. Maybe after 10 years, I don't know. Maybe he wants to go to another crop. So his business should be such that it should be sellable. That he should, after doing so much of hard work, when he wants to move from one crop to another crop, when he wants to move from one place to another place, the business should give him some money. It should be sellable. So that's the idea of building business to sell. So either you sell or you make it such a way that it is sellable. Not that all the work you have done is just gone down the drain as such. Okay. Let's move forward. Then the question comes, yes, if you now agree that we should have businesses which can run without us and we can have businesses which should be sellable or which in a position I should be able to sell. Let's say I want to move out from here. The business I have which I've been running for so many years, it should be able to give me some returns. But my question is how? How do we set up businesses which we can sell or which can run without us? Delegate power to your team member. Train your team members. Then, if you see here, I wrote here, hire for attitude, train for skill. So, this was already coming in my slide. So, when that gentleman asked about the team member, I said, okay, let me play this slide at the beginning so that at least his question can be further buttressed by this point that you should hire for attitude, train for skill. By the time you delegate to them, you need to empower them. You need to make them, give them that decision-making authority. Yes, they might mistakes. They might make mistakes here and there, but you need to leave that mistakes. You need to see and make them grow, make them learn. But if the same person is making the same mistake every time, what will you do? Let him go. Let him go. But if he's making a different mistake, which you think you have not trained him. If he's making a different mistake, mistake which you think he does not have an exposure, you, you might give him a chance that, okay, no, let's give the person a benefit of doubt because you cannot be everywhere. You have, it's your team member who's the face of you. It's your team member who will make your dream come true. As John Maxwell says, teamwork makes dream work. So you need to make that team which will make the dream to work. So you have to empower them. You need to give them that decision-making authority. Moving forward, need to put check and balances in place since you're not there you need to put checks and balances in place so that not one fine day you go there your business is gone you need before you get out of that business before you say okay my team is going to handle it you make sure that you have the checks and balances put in place and you have procedures and processes written down so that each and every person knows what he and she is supposed to do each person, each department, each individual, each team member should 
be very clear of their job description their responsibilities etc with this you can set up a business but to set up a business which can run without you you know the first thing you need you know what you need the first thing is the mindset that yes i want to set up a business which can run without me so before you go to these steps it is you you have to decide yes i want a business which can run without me so the first step is your mindset that yes i want to set up a business which can run without me i'll tell you my own personal experience i was running a business and one of my young nephew he came to my office so uncle can i have tea with you so okay fine let's have tea together as he was sipping the tea he asked me a question hmm uncle what business are you doing i said we buy and sell plastic raw materials so we are into the business of trading of plastic raw materials so uncle nice business you seem to be very busy i said yes i am busy person he said uncle in your company who does the purchases so usually i do the bulk purchases and all so who does the sales i said my younger brother is there he does most of the sales who does the accounting so he went on asking questions of responsibility so it was between me and my brother everything was everything was between me and my brother between my, my brother he said uncle what's the name of your company i said the name of my company is success plastics and industries limited so hmm uncle don't you think you should change the name to pradeep and shailesh najar limited you could laugh i couldn't laugh because at that point of time i didn't knew what he was saying say pradeep and shailesh najar limited you started speaking as tea i got busy on the phone of buying and selling plastic raw material when i went home that night i couldn't sleep i said what is that boy trying to tell me he tried to tell me that everything is rolling between two of us so it means from that business if you remove pradeep and shailesh the business is no more there so if god forbid tomorrow i drop dead there's no business again right because everything was revolving around me so ha okay this is the message this small boy was trying to pass across to me and now change my mindset that's why i said it starts from changing your mindset that oh i need to run a business which can run without me that's the time i took a conscious decision so if you want to run a business without you you need to take a conscious decision i took that conscious decision and then set up a new company and follow the steps i told you so these steps which i told you they're not academic i i'm i'm not a professor at a university this is all practical i've spent 27 years here this one i don't see myself koro koro my my mentor tokam so richard branson tokam i know me time eye, eyeball to eyeball but i follow him. i say this one makes sense and now put them to practice as i put them to practice i say they work as they work it they motivate me as they work it they ginger me feel like say i go flow pigeon no abi make the flow with pigeon i am i go i go carry go now go carry go like that go carry go if it say if i talk pigeon it the entire body abi okay now we go try any place i block i could change to english but if i no block now you go understand now abi oh yeah let's see waiting there again waiting there ahead. let's see my brother mogadi talk say my topic be franchising at this stage i never talk franchising at the talk of what uh, professor falake talk at the talk what mogaji talk at the talk what biodun talk at the talk what sir sir branson talk i forget say why he bring me on stage no be so na lai i no forget see him for screen oh yeah show them the screen show them the screen i no forget bros show the screen now why they fall my hand uh, where the screen bros ah uh, oh it Oh my people. Where is okay? So, I know forget why they bring me stage, eh? So the topic is how to scale up your business using franchising, okay? That's my topic. So I'm now coming to my topic now. Lataro I just they there. I just they play. I just they play go. I just they play go. As they play, I don't know if you learn something there or if you don't learn something. But what I did is I share my experience saying a so so thing happened to me. So if it happened to me, I pray say make you know happen to you. So that's why I talk say make you learn from my experience and I learn from the experience of Richard Branson. 
I, I practice them and I make it happen. That's why I fit come here. I fit talk. Say do like this. Nobody say I just they talk for nothing. It happened to me and I've done it. Okay. Come back to the topic of franchising. How many of us don't hear the word franchising before? Una plenty you. Ha. Huh? My brother Mogaji. He talks to people no go no franchising here. Why I can't put definition of franchising here? Make I skip that slide abi. Don't shout now. I don't like shouting now. Don't shout at me now. Ah. Don't shout at me. Okay. Let's see what franchising means to me. Maybe somebody else can contribute to that. Let's see. Franchising is an agreement between franchisor and franchisee. Wherein the franchisor, that's the brand owner, permits the franchisee, that's the buyer of the brand, to make use not only of his brand name, but also his logo and his proven success formula. This one, the English Abi. Yeah. Make me come back to our level. This thing they talk say, franchising mean you get two parties, the franchisor and the franchisee. Let's take an example. Let's use one company as an example of franchising. Just give me any one name which you know of franchising. Which company? Mr. Big Sabi. You know, I hear KFC here, but because that man is brand, that's why I, I pretend I say I know here from my right ear. When somebody talk Mr. Biggs, he enter my body. Uh -huh. So, Mr. Biggs is the franchisor. Okay? Now, Mr. Biggs wants to scale up. They want to get lot, they want to get a lot of branches. But sometimes they don't get maybe enough money or they don't have the capital, I mean human capital, or maybe they don't want the headache of supervising, managing so many branches. It could be any of the reasons. Is it not so? It could be that they don't have enough liquidity. Maybe they don't have enough manpower. Or maybe they have the money, they have the manpower, but they don't want the stress of managing so many branches. So what they did is, they called somebody, say, Bros, come, I'm Mr. Biggs. Do you want to open a branch at Elisha? I said, ah, uh -uh, that one, my, my hometown now. That's where I come from. Mr. Biggs will sell there. So you now come to Mr. Biggs. Two of them will get agreement. That is franchising. Where the franchisor, Mr. Biggs will tell him, say, when I want to start Mr. Biggs, Abhi, mm -hmm. you will get one shop at the corner of the road. Ah. My uncle will get one shop now. Ah. Even if my uncle no get, to get that shop, no hard. Uh -huh. What I need again? It's okay. You will need 22 people. Ah, 22 people. Okay. What do you need? Uh, you need this equipment. They will give the whole list. They will give him everything. The formula for how to fry the chicken, what spices to use, everything they will hand over to the franchisee. Why they go hand over what they know, what they have been successful at. Why will they give it to him? One, they will get, first, they will get franchising fee from him. Are we together? After getting the franchising fee, as Ogadon, okay, they run the business, they go. Money, they come. Money, they come. For every sales he makes, Mr. Biggs will get royalty. Mr. Biggs will get money from the money he's making. You see it, Abi? So it means, if I be the franchisor, because I have been successful in something, for me to give you the formula, I will see money. Because I don't give you the money, the formula, you go make money because I go hold your hand. Say, don't do this, so I did like this. I lose money. Don't do this, so so I give you a list. Do this, don't do this. So because you know you're not supposed to do this one, you know go make the mistakes I made before. Because when I start, I made mistakes. Don't be so. Pure to when he started, did he make mistakes? He made mistakes. He talks, say, he burnt his finger. Did you see any of his fingers burnt? But so he talk now, he say he burnt his finger, no be so. Anyway, so burning the finger, na slang, Abi. Na slang, say, he don't suffer. So when I'm selling the franchise to him, the guy no go suffer because I go, I go hold his hand, say, do like this, do like this, don't do like this. Are we together? So as a franchisor, I go get the franchising fees and any sales he makes, you go get, I go, I go get money. You sweet like that, right? So if, we have understood how franchising works for Mr. Biggs. Can we just think? Close your eyes. Close your eyes in a slang. Nobody say you go close your eyes. In a slang. Just think. How will you apply this in your business? How will you apply this in your business? It means first and foremost, for you to be able to franchise out, what's the first criteria? First criteria is you must be successful. You must have that formula. Somebody won't buy up. You don't do it. You work well. 
Biodu has done something. You work well. You, you fit franchise him. Because he has to know how, how to go about the maize planting. Correct? Second, you should have the mindset, say I want to sell him. Some people they fear, ah, sure, me. I work for maize for seven years. Biodu go fear. Person like Biodu go fear. Say, ah, this one I suffer. I burn my hand for seven years. Somebody will come. I will just write them down. Give them, say, do like this, do like this. The nitrogen level like this. The sun level like this. All the grammar. I go show them for one day like this. Now lie. Person like Biodu go fear. But when he see the money involved, Biodu go say, eh, it's so? Yeah, yeah. Let's sit down. Let's sit down. Where make I sign? You go now collect my own biro. Take sign. Okay. Let's see what we have next time. I talk up now, say franchise or collect franchising fees and you collect royalty. No be so? Okay. Let's go forward. So for the you to be able to franchise, you should be successful. You should have a proven track record. Uh-huh. How to make your company franchisable? Before when I talk say how make you do a company which can run without you. You think say I they go off track Abi? Say the flyer saying I go talk about franchising. Now see this mumu here. They talk about how to go run business without you. No be so. And there they come now. If you want to be franchisable, that is if you want to franchise your business to somebody, it should be able to run without you. No be so. If that franchise business which I won't give up for Elisha, if it requires say make I take Elisha, I will cut myself into two, one for Lagos, one for Elisha. Not possible now. My brother will come say he won't open branch for Mr. Bix for Abakalaiki. I go divide myself into three portions, Abi. One go there Abakalaiki, one go there Elisha, one go there Lagos. No be so now. So when I talk say the business is supposed to run without you, I was going towards you being franchisable. Let's see what this one talk now. You go get English there. First and foremost. Mindset. I think say we talk about me. That you should have that mindset that I want to have a business which can run without me. I should I want to have a business which I should be able to franchise out. Do you want to have a front business which you can franchise out? You want to have. Okay. So first and foremost, you should have that mindset. Okay? Let's see. You should have systems and processes well documented. When I make you know write this one now, they go say they go send the slides to you now. Make you listen with the talk now, with the yarn here now. This one you go get by email now. The thing they screen, no write down. The thing enter from mouth. The word, what does word spread? Uh-huh, you write that one. But what they screen, they go, bros. You go send them the slides now. Bros. Slides will come to them, Abi. Slides are coming to you. Say you're given your email addresses, Abi. Uh-huh, so you will see the slides. Okay. So I'm saying systems and processes should be well documented. So that even if, even not say, even if you're not supposed to be there for that business. So as you're not there, they should know what to do, what not to do. Okay? Checks and balances should be in place. We talk on before now. So that time we talk on is not for nothing. We they build up towards franchising. Okay? Staff training manuals. So you have set up a business. You have staff. You have trained them. Now you want him to start a similar branch in Elisha. He is supposed to get staff also. No be so. So that staff is also supposed to be trained in the same manner. So you have to give him the staff training manual that okay, these are the staff training manual and most times in the agreement, the franchise agreement, the franchisor, you agree say one month or two month or three month, me or my people will come and train your people. That's part of the agreement as such usually. Track record. So if my business, I'm interested in franchising out, you should have a track record. Otherwise, why should somebody pay me franchising fee? Why should somebody give me royalty free? Why should somebody buy the franchising from me? Now, we have seen the advantages of franchising to the franchisor, have we? But the franchisee who is buying the franchise, he is supposed to get advantage, no be so? What advantage does he get? What advantage does he get? First, he gets a ready-made formula which has been tried and tested. Instead of him to burn fingers like Biodo in the starting and learn the hard way, he knows that 
there's a business formula which can run number one number two from the onset he gonna say how much capital is required you could know because all the analysis could be number three from that analysis he gonna say I did invest so much money this is going to be my return this is the money I'm going to get in return of this investment of doing this business number four he that person who they buy franchise he's also riding on the brand of the franchisor correct so if he's buying a, a franchise of Mr. Biggs when he opened shop he no go name up his own name now he's what he has opened is a Mr. Biggs franchise so he will put the signboard of Mr. Biggs so people who savvy Mr. Biggs says okay Mr. Biggs Mr. Biggs oh Mr. Biggs they like shower Mr. Biggs Mr. they go use people go use the name come his shop no be so so to the franchisee he's getting ready-made business he's knowing how much to invest he knows how much his returns are he's riding on the franchisor's brand he won't make the mistakes the guy has made in the past and all this so both of them the franchisor has advantage the franchisee has advantage is it not so so is it not a win-win situation is it not a win-win situation so can you try and see how you can first set up a business which can run without you can you think on your own write it down on your own for your own for your own exercise how will you set up a business which should be franchisable that you should be able to franchise because if you don't have the mindset if you don't have the track record if you don't have the systems if you don't have the procedures if you don't have the processes put in place nobody will buy your franchise nobody will buy your franchise as such okay let's move forward how many people have heard about 7-eleven supermarkets okay very few people have heard about 7-eleven they have 55,000 outlets worldwide is a supermarket is a supermarket chain of supermarket who they have franchise out 7-eleven subway is a food outlet like uh, kfc and uh, chicken republic they have 42,000 outlets mcdonald's mcdonald's has 33,000 outlets kfc kfc has 18,000 outlets burger king burger king has 13,000 outlets why am I showing you these figures? Why am I showing you these figures? I'll go back to Professor Falaki. She said, have the mindset, mindset of growth. Think big. Think of growing. So when you're looking at those numbers, bro, show us the numbers. 55,000 outlets in a moi moi. No be moi moi now. 42,000 na chicken play no be play now the serious matter but somebody think I'm saying so many thousand outlets we fit to them if you just count the last three outlets last three that's McDonald's KFC and Burger King more than 100,000 can you imagine here we are struggling with one one branch is it not so one business we are struggling and here we are looking at people who have not thousands tens of thousands of branches so maybe as we day here now how many of us want to claim this as your success portion say amen my people they are awake I was just checking how many people are awake so as many people who shout awake they say amen those who are still sleeping they say make it continue now now let's come to our home ground let's come back to home yeah how many Nigerian brands except Mr. Biggs you know who have been successful on franchising? Slot, fantastic. Slot has been a very good example. Anyone else? Shop right now, foreign owner, South Africa. Oh. Uh, huh? Just right. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's, let's see, let's see. Biggs, number one, because him start the whole game here of franchising how many have heard of best choice best choice supermarket as per the last figures I have within Lagos they have 400 supermarkets within Lagos they have 400 supermarkets curves and fitness is a gym house of Tara slot somebody don't talk up here say slot they do franchising studio 24 so if you see some people having branches anyhow anyhow nobody say let them get up no be within the column 
company owned company managed company owned company operated coco they call it cocco company owned company operated not all of them are company owned and company operated some of them follow the franchising model and they give franchising out and get the franchising fees and as they, these people are making sales they get royalty from that business okay. that is why they bring me here to talk so i have all my yarn all my talk which i want talk i don't finish why do you look me like this you don't finish you don't finish now so we go now ready for questions anybody has questions you go take questions now Please God. All <laughs> protocols observed. Thank you sir. Please what I wanted to ask is you want to you buy or take a franchise. Probably with all your mind with all your technical know how. You think that such a, a company or whatever can do well in your area. But unfortunately it didn't work well. So how do you pay other grievances like what make, make answer that one abi yes sir he talk say if you take franchise and if you no work if you no work you no work but the franchisor has a responsibility of training the franchisor has a responsibility of holding your hand the franchisor has a responsibility of give you the formula you succeed why as you succeed as you make money from that money you make i go get money which they switch me so yes it's not impossible that you take a franchise and you fail is possible but the chances are less because you who put the money down you no know, go allow them to go so easily because you don't put money down you don't get the shop you don't put the franchising fee you don't put your leg inside no be so you have taken the action so you may want you may try all your best that make it no fail that's from your own side and from the franchisor side because he wants the money to flow that every month when you make sales he go see alert pam pam i don't see alert god do we in so usually usually it may not fail but if you are one of the persons where it fails it fails it fails nothing you can do about it you close you look for another thing to do Now so now if you no work no work now what the man go do you go kill himself abi no kill himself now you can kill yourself and so, some chemists they sell beer too okay otomba thank you very much sir uh, my question sir what is the difference between franchising and mentorship is it the same thing and okay hold it he, he drop one heavy bomb Now they look for small bomb. Which bomb make I detonate here? Calm down. Sit down. Sit down. Now when you drop, no be small one. Sit down. <laughs> the guy they asked me whether now franchising and mentor no same thing. No be same thing at all. At all. At all. Let me explain to you how. Franchisor, he get business. Franchisor get successful business which they make money. and people they look ah this guy do hammer make a hammer like him so people they look say bros show us the road now so as bros be bros na smart man he don't travel before bros go say i go help you but you go shake body now one na franchising but if you now come to mentoring that mentor he get business and no be say he want to give you his own business he won't help you in your own business The franchisor wants to give you his own business, his own success formula. He won't give to you. Not be free of charge. He will collect money. Mentor, he will not collect money. But whichever business they do, he will use his own experience. He will use his own knowledge to guide you, so make you no fail. So that's the difference between franchisor and a mentor. If, oh yeah, throw the second one now. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Uh, from a coca cola experience these days there is this new big cola that has really challenged coca cola in nigeria how can one protect his own brand thank you he wanted to make sure that i confuse <laughs> now you're talking about coca cola and big cola then now he bring bring down how do i protect my own brand 
Okay, I know if it confused me, this like that now. To protect your own brand, you have to register. You have to take a copyright on your brand. Contact your lawyer. I mean, I know be lawyer. So contact your lawyer. Say, I get this. I want to register and make nobody copy them. I, want, I have a brand. I have something that they do. Make you register them for corporate affairs commission or registry of Kiniko uh, Kiniko. Talk to the lawyer. Me, I don't know about that one. What I know is that you need a lawyer. That's what I know. Any lawyers in the house should contact him. Who, any lawyers who fit help arms, give him your card. Say, that thing you talk, I fit to him because they are part of the agri value chain. Even I'm a lawyer, that one a consulting. I get, I, I'm an agri lawyer. I fit help you with your brand of your agri brand. Or you talk your own now. Yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, my question is this. Um, fine, everybody has intention. I've been, uh, the previous speaker mentioned mindset. Mindset, intention. My brother, can intention die and what can kill intention? One house, one house. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. If you know the answer, see I'm later. They wear blue suit, uh, blue shirt and a red tie. See I'm later. But now you follow me, ask. Bros, you know what can kill the intention? Only you. Only you fit kill that intention. Make an expansion. Are you okay? You're okay. Oh yeah. Next one. Good morning, everybody. Sir, you you talked about the good side of our franchising and the franchise or the franchising. Now I've seen an instance in my area where a shop was um, franchised as best choice, and of recent they did the renovation and she changed the name of her shop to Cornerstone Mats. Now I want to ask, what are the side effects or the negative aspects of franchising? Are there rules of like um, after five, ten years you can take your um, company back, or what are the rules? What are the the pros and cons to it? Not just only the good side. Thank you, sir. Sure. Can we go back to this slide? Just a minute, huh? madam. Now you saw a franchise thing coming up, and you saw that that franchise was closed down and a new shop was opened with a new name did you do any study on that did you find out what happened no franchising is basically an agreement between the two parties so whether they will be in partnership for two years five years ten years twenty years will be determined by that agreement that's number one number two in that failed franchise you don't know who failed is the franchiser who failed to fulfill his promise or is it the franchisee failed to fulfill his promise of paying so much money for the goods? Let's say he was buying the goods and after some time he's supposed to pay the franchisor to buy more goods and then the suddenly the franchisee stopped paying money for the goods. Franchise is a businessman now. He will say, okay, I know if it give you money. If you don't get money, I will not give you the goods. Is it not so? So yes, franchises can fail. But I'm saying the chances of franchising failing should be less because a person who has bought the franchise has put in his money, he has put in his time, he has put in his energy. At the same time, the franchisor is getting money on a regular basis from the businesses which are going to be happening every month. So he also wants the business to be successful. So in that particular case, we don't know what happened. We need to find out what really happened and find out the details of it. So I don't know in that case what happened, but the bad side of franchising, the downside of franchising is that sometimes the money the franchisor is asking the franchisee could be too much. Sometimes the percentage of royalty he wants to take from the monthly sales, it could be too much. Then it all depends on, comes back to the agreement. What was the negotiation between the two of them? What is the money as franchising fees? What was the money as royalty fees? What was the percentage you were supposed to give? It depends on that agreement. Madam? So it all depends on the agreement and a franchise failed could be anybody's Handwork. It could be the handwork of the franchiser. It could be the handwork of franchisee. We don't know until we go and ask them. Say, bros, where thing happened? I see this shop before. Now, now, no, get that same shop. Where thing happened? Because you want to learn from there. You go fit. Ask the person. Say, where thing happened? Thank you. Thank you. Trip Africa. Imagine more.